it's been over a month since the official Kerbal Space Program account tweeted that they're still hard at work on KSP2. This week, they finally delivered something. Hello everybody and welcome. It's been a sad and tumultuous time for fans of Kerbal Space Program ever since we found out that basically the entire studio developing Kerbal Space Program 2 will be laid off at the end of June. Aside from that simple tweet and some corporate nothingness, there was complete radio silence as to what is going to happen. Of course, the rumor mill went wild, but in reality we didn't really have anything to go on. Now, out of the blue, Patch Point 2.2 has been released, and it truly feels like a swan song to KSP2. I'm going to explain why in a second, but first I want to ask you to subscribe if you haven't already. After almost 10 years on YouTube, I really want to break the 100,000 subscriber mark before the year is out. You all have been very kind to my channel and the growth over the past weeks was amazing. But there is still a long way to go. There is even a longer way to go for Kerbal Space Program 2 if we look at the roadmap outlined over a year ago. But given the layoffs and the fact that Take 2 is even looking into selling off private division in its entirety, we can now pretty safely say that it's never going to happen. The most we could have hoped for was that they would release the Colonies update, but even that is not a given now. So, patch point 2.2. What's in it? And why do I think it is the swan song for Cobalt Space Program 2? There's a detailed list of what's in the patch over on the forums, but I just want to highlight a couple of things. First, they have removed the private division launcher. That's right, the game will no longer launch another application before getting you into space. Many players have hated the thing anyway, so that will not come as a loss for the majority. But it is a big indicator that it's truly over for KSP2 and Private Division. There were rumors floating around that Take-2 attempted to sell off the Kerbal Space Program intellectual property, but that this deal fell through. If another prospective buyer truly picks up what's left of the franchise, they surely wouldn't want to have a launcher application from another company in there. Some people also took the item, updated game credits, as a hint that it's over for KSP2. While not an unreasonable assumption, this is not as much a red flag as the removal of the launcher. They did update the credits with the For Science update as well, for instance. From what I understand, this is a housekeeping process that happened from time to time. As for the other things, well, there is not a lot, to be honest. We got 28 changes in total compared to the previous version, two of which are the launcher removal and the updated credits. That's a rather meager patch compared to previous iterations. The smallest until now was version 0.21 with 68 fixes, more than double what we got now. And we had to wait the longest for this patch, more than 130 days since the previous release. Many of the fixes address long-standing issues voiced by the community, for instance parachutes misbehaving or vehicles having an incorrect landed state in certain situations. Another gripe I myself had with KSP2 was the fact that the maneuver planner refused to move past the point where your spacecraft would run out of fuel. Planning for longer trips to see how much fuel you would require and then getting back and redesigning your vehicle to improve upon what you did earlier wasn't really possible that way. Now the maneuver planner behaves like it should and additionally it tells you when your vehicle will run out of fuel, so that's a welcome improvement. Some other changes concern the user interface. When your vehicle is stationary, a button appears enabling you to recover it. There also is a big indicator telling players that time warp is active if the green arrows below aren't enough to recognize this. Honestly, I did have a couple of situations where I didn't notice that I was in time warp, so that too is a welcome addition, at least from my perspective. What I think is sad is the fact that there are parts of the game that received no treatment at all with version 0.22. There is nothing in there to optimize performance, nothing in regards to environments or parts. Those improved clouds they showed off as work in progress, they are not in here and probably never will be since the developer who had worked on them is already looking for a new job. 
I have to tell you I am torn on this release. On one hand, I'm glad that we got at least this update that addresses a couple of issues. On the other hand, it hurts knowing that this will probably be the last update ever to KSP2. It really does. Kerbal Space Program has been part of my life for over a decade now and I wanted KSP2 to live up to the hype and be a fresh start for the franchise. But as I outlined in my development history video, there were so many mistakes made that it's infuriating. In that way, I thought it's fitting to build a replica of the Pathfinder nuclear shuttle from the TV series for all mankind, because it too was a highly ambitious project with a lot of flaws. And I mean the series as well as the fictional nuke shuttle. Honestly, after season 2 the show just started to decline for me. What's your opinion on that? Did you watch For All Mankind? Did you enjoy it until the end of season 4? Let me know in the comments. Even with my main four kerbals shot into the unknown depths of interstellar space, I will still do some more videos about KSP2, because there are some things I haven't tried yet and some things I want to show you. I'm also still planning on doing that video about KSP2 multiplayer where I have had some interesting additional information not included in my development history video. That subscription I mentioned at the beginning will pay off, I promise. Speaking of promises, I promise everyone signing up for the higher tiers on my Patreon or my YouTube members to be represented in my videos and all of these fine folks took me up on that offer. Thank you so much for your support, you help keep the lights on around here. The lights at Intercept Games, the studio that has developed Kerbal Space Program 2 until now, will go out on June 28th, at least according to the war notice published at the end of April. There still hopes somebody else somewhere will turn the lights on again, but until then we have to make do with what we have. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.